Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you might be. In this upload, which is for absolute beginners to Excel, we're going to look at a very important feature in Excel called the Autofill button. And when we've looked at the Autofill button and what it can do for us, we're going to look at things called absolute values and why do we see dollar signs in formulas and what do they mean. So the first thing we're going to do, and we'll tick off, as we go through is the autofill button and in this worksheet here I see that the autofill button is in the bottom right hand corner of a cell so when I click in a cell there I will see a little blob in the bottom right hand corner and when I point at that little blob my mouse becomes a crosshair to use the autofill button I need to see the mouse in that particular cursor shape over here we have some data and what I'm going to do is to show you that when I click in a cell and I see the little blob in the right hand corner it's no longer over here it's here in the active cell now when I point my mouse at that autofill button and hold down the left mouse button I can copy down and fill the adjacent cells as I drag down with the information so the autofill button can be used to copy text. Numbers are just that little bit different because if I want a number series for example 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 etc because there is only one number in this cell if I perform the same uh, technique as I did with the cat and hold down the left mouse button after seeing the autofill button I simply copy the number 1 down. So what I'm going to do is to undo that last action and this time looking at the autofill button I'm going to click the use the right mouse button hold the right mouse button down drag down and a menu will appear the only thing that ever happens when you use the right mouse button is that a menu appears right down the bottom is a command called series and if I click on series up pops a window the series window that says do you want a step value of one in other words increase the numbers by one each time that will certainly do me at this stage so I'll click OK and there the numbers are automatically filled down let's undo that last action and this time I want the numbers to start at 1 and with my right mouse button held down again I click on series but this time I want the numbers to have a step value we'll say of 5 so when I click OK now the numbers increase by 5 each time so that's why we can use the autofill button when numbers are involved in our cells to increase the efficiency of our working with Excel. Formulas. Let's look at the formula here. The formula in this cell is B1 plus C1. If I drag down through the next cell, the formula becomes B2 plus C2 because Excel has copied that formula down and taken care of the fact that we have moved through different columns and rows. We've, we've moved through B2 and C2. But if I continue to copy down, I get a zero. Why? Because when I click on that cell and look at the formula, it's trying to say B3 plus C3. There is nothing in those cells, nothing in B3 or C3. If I continue to copy down from this one, nothing in B6 or C6, so the answer is 0, but because there's text here in B7, when I drag down with my mouse, I get a value error. That is an error message to say that you cannot um, copy text from cells where there are formulas involved. So that's why I get that error message there. Let's look at an alternative to the cat just before we move on and I'll undo that last action there and those actions there. The cat, you remember how we clicked on this cell and with our left uh, mouse button held down when I see the auto sum, auto fill button I was able to copy down. That was exactly the same as if I did this. I click on the cat, I'll right click and copy, drag down through the cells into which I want to paste the cat right click on one of them and paste and there I see 
the exact same result as I did using the uh, autofill button except there were more actions involved so the autofill button to um, uh, uh, to autofill text is much more efficient okay we saw how the formulas only worked where there was data in the cells through which I dragged with my mouse button. We can now move on and look at what are known as absolute values. Before we do that we'll go back to our checklist. We looked at copying with autofill, we looked at how autofill worked with numbers and we looked at using autofill with formulas. Now let's look at absolute values. Here is a particular um, uh, commission calculation. I want to work out at 5% commission what will be the commission on these sales. So the sales are in B2, the commission rate, uh, my apologies, in B5, and the commission rate is in C2. So we'll type into that cell formula equal B5 multiplied by C2 and when I press control enter which keeps me in that same cell there is a commission $945 and you would imagine the way I use the autofill button in the other worksheet that if I copy that formula down by using my autofill button and the left mouse button held down that I would see the commissions available in the other cells but I don't why is that? Well, in here, as I drag down through this cell, the formula changes to B6 multiplied by C3. There's certainly something in B6, but there is nothing in C3. As I drag down through this cell, there's certainly something in B7, but there is text in C4, the word commission. What's in this cell? B8 times C5. No, can't do anything like that. So what I'm going to do, in fact what it's really done is multiply the contents of that cell B8 by C5 which is 945 to give me a meaningless answer of that. So uh, the, the formulas work but it's related to the incorrect cells. So let's undo that last action and we will delete what is in those cells. Now what I'm going to do in this cell is simply to say to Excel I always want to refer in the formula to C2. So what I need to do is to put a dollar sign in front of the C and a dollar sign in front of the 2. Now what that does, that locks Excel's reference to that cell in the formula. It will increase the rows as we go down, as we shall see, but it always uses what is in C2. That is called an absolute value in a formula. So what we'll now do with our um, uh, autofill button available, we'll drag down through the cells, and there are our correct answers. Why? Because now in this cell, I'm multiplying what's in B6 by C2, because I made that cell absolute. This cell... B7 times C2, etc, etc. So all I had to do was to put dollar signs in front of the cell reference in the formula. So let's look at a small shop situation where the cost excluding tax is say 130, 450, 290, etc. And we want to work out what is the cost including tax, maybe for ticketing purposes, uh, profit and loss, so on and so forth. So what we'll do, we'll click into this cell and we're going to type a formula. Equals E5 multiplied by $F2 and then we're going to put brackets around that because that will show me the tax. A bracket there and then we want to add back the cost x tax so plus e5 so just to explain that formula e5 there 
times dollar f dollar two will give me the the uh, sales tax and then if I add back the cost x tax e5 then I can see that I have the uh, cost including tax so let's control enter there's my answer there good and now I can simply auto fill that down with my mouse button and there are my answers now the advantage of using uh, commission and sales tax rates etc and the like in cells is that if the sales tax rate increases to say 12% I only have to change the number in one cell and when I press enter all the other cells change to reflect the difference similarly if I increased the uh, commission rate to 10% I've only got to change that figure in there and all of the um, uh, other cells can be changed automatically for you thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget to practice and remember practice makes perfect we'll see you next time bye for now